Y'all, life be life in y'all, and I got hella updates for y'all. My lashes still look good, and I got them done a month ago, period. Everybody wants to know what happened to you know who. I feel like I had this pencil for like eight years. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like, you know, I know my baby got posted on Father's Day. It's like, you just be minding your business, and she's like, damn, I'm baby mama. Pump gas, damn, I'm baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey y'all, welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jayla. Thank you for clicking on this video. Jayla Majet, J Majet, whatever you prefer. And if you are not new here, girl, welcome back. I got a little update for y'all. I got a little life update, a little tea. Life would be life in. And I gotta come through with updates. So, y'all, oh my God, look. I use my planner. <laughs> guys, friends, look at my planner. Aren't you guys proud of me? Like, wow. I call these for like my YouTube sermons. I actually wrote this one out because I just wanted it to like, you know, flow effortlessly because I had a lot to say and I wanna make sure I don't miss anything. But first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skip to the future because I got a little ad for Better Health. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. And then we're gonna get right back to the video. Better Help is the world's largest online therapy service. With Better Help, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists that are all specialize in a wide range of issues. So first you fill out this questionnaire to see what your preferences and your needs are when it comes to your mental health and a therapist. And then they're gonna match you with your very own like, custom fit therapist. And then once you're matched, you can schedule an appointment, you can do video call, phone call, messages, any way of communication that you would prefer. And you can also schedule it like on your own time at your own convenience. And for any reason, if that therapist isn't a good fit, you can change your therapist free of charge. So with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and the same quality that you'd expect in an office except for it's in the comfort of your own home at your convenience and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. That's B-E-T-T-E-R help H-E-L-P dot com slash Jayla J-E-L-E-H <laughs> and um, it's also linked in the description box for you guys. Okay back to the video. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the NYX um, brow glue. Sometimes I don't know how to feel about this product because I switch between this and the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow freeze, but that wax be melting, baby. Let me tell you something. But you gotta take this and like, hold on. With this, you gotta like drag it all throughout all your brow hairs. And then I got this Refi Brow Scope. I'm not actually gonna use the product, right? I'm just gonna use this side and just brush this upwards like this. Yeah, and I like this Refi Brow Scope. I just wish that it was just a little bit more tacky. Gonna finish my brows here. But yeah, y'all, life be life in y'all, and I got hella updates for y'all, so. I'm gonna address some questions that I kinda been getting. Um, a big question that I've been getting is, what happened with the Houston move, and am I still moving to Houston? Um, It wasn't time for me to move to Houston, y'all. It just wasn't time. Like, I was trying to move. There was just so many roadblocks and there was just so many things that just weren't aligning and it was just too much resistance. So I'm just like, okay, maybe there's just something else in Virginia that, you know, I'm not supposed to leave yet. And then I found Jackson's nanny. So I guess that made sense as to why I didn't, why I didn't move. But um, yeah, um, because Jackson is starting kindergarten this year, I don't plan on moving anytime soon honestly to be honest with y'all y'all i got so much like personal things that i gotta take care of like first of all like getting unmarried <laughs> um so before i just start making big girl moves and like big girl changes and stuff you know but that's a whole like conversation in itself that i really don't want to talk about on youtube but yeah i'm never gonna hide the fact that i'm still legally married it's just ghetto it's just so ghetto i can't believe i'm one of them people it's just the ghetto, y'all. It's so bad. Even dating, like, and having to tell people, like, yeah, uh, I'm still legally married. That's just like, oof, girl. Like, yeah. It's a whole situation, though. So, um, it's not as easy as people would, I guess, think, especially when you have, like, children and, like, property and stuff involved. So, everything gonna happen when God wanted to happen, okay? Um, but yeah, I found Jackson's nanny. Um, shortly after I decided to stay. Like, right after I decided to stay. So, she has been, I mean, amazing. I decided to pull Jackson out of full-time daycare because I just felt like he wasn't really 
thriving. This is my Fenty Brow MVP in deep black. But I had Jackson in daycare for a long time since he was like 18 months. And you know, people are like, oh, the hell with his social skills. Jackson don't want to be around them people. He don't, he don't care. Jackson don't want to. And I just decided that it would be better if he had a nanny. And it's so funny because when I was looking for a nanny, like a full-time nanny, I couldn't find one. And the way she just fell in my lap was crazy. But the reason why I couldn't find one is because, girl, I wanted a nanny so I can go to the club. God was like, girl, I'm not giving you no nanny so you can go to the club. Are you crazy? <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> I didn't have one. <laughs> and so, yeah, she came like right on time. And uh, like last week, they went to the pool and it was a Tuesday. And I was just... I just felt so blessed that it's Tuesday and uh, my nanny's here and Jax is in the pool and he was swimming like by himself. I thought Jax couldn't swim. The boy can actually swim. I don't know where he learned that from, but he can swim. She had him let go and stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, like if Jackson was in the pool with me, I would have never let him go. So I wouldn't have known that Jackson could swim. Oh, good walk. job. Look at Pushing you swimming. Go baby, go. Go baby, go. Go baby, go. Good job. Go, baby. He stopped at the gym. You got it. Ah. Oh. You want to float? It feels good to have somebody, like a partner with Jax, you know? And she's happy and Jack's happy and like I'm happy and like we're just happy. You know what I mean? Another change is I am moving again, okay? <laughs> so I am moving, but just not out of the state. But I am moving into a townhouse because I feel like apartment living, I'm just over it, y'all. I had a domestic violence situation next door to me and it was so traumatic and I just decided that, you know, I don't want to live this close to people anymore. Um, so yeah, and I actually move in a couple days and I haven't packed anything. So I don't know what the vlogs are going to look like because of that. So yeah, just bear with me while I'm trying to get my life together constantly. <clears throat> Y'all know that never don't stop. I always hated this unit. Like I didn't like this unit. So I was always ready to transfer out of this unit. Like if you got a three bedroom, let me know. The three bedroom that I kind of got booted out of became available again. And um, I was like, all right, cool. Put it in that transfer. You know what I'm saying? Then the leasing office was like, yeah, well you got to resubmit your bank statements and your rent going to be this much if you do your move in date, you know, for this, like it just wasn't working out. And so I was just like, Hmm, I think I'm gonna go find some other options. And then in the mix of me looking for those other options, the domestic situation, the domestic violence situation got worse next door. And I can hear just, oh, oh my God, it was just so terrible, y'all. Like living next to that, like just, I'm just living next to that. It just was really, really traumatizing. So, um, like literally like listening to this girl again, it was so traumatizing. And so I just decided that, hold on, where my brush at? Right here. Okay, so I'm gonna use, um, this is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer in Caramel. And I'm just gonna use that like on uh, these. Oh, I didn't prime my face. Oh, I didn't prime my face. Okay, you know, Milk Makeup Hydro Primer to prime the face. But I didn't, um, after that, it like traumatized me. I knew I was traumatized because I had gone to sleep and then I heard a man's voice outside and uh, I like jolted out of my sleep. Like I was so scared and I just, my flight of flight like immediately triggered and I just went into, oh my God, I'm about to have to protect my baby. Like, you know, you just don't know like how people are. You don't know how crazy people are to you. And I don't want to live close, like really close. Like, I know things happen everywhere, but um, the fact that I could hear it and I was experiencing it, even though it wasn't my situation, was just too much for me. It was too much. Let that stuff go on behind closed doors and that let that be, you know what I'm saying? But we got closed doors and we got thin walls and like it just... It's not mixing for me. And so um, I hit up my cousin and I'm like, hey cousin, she's a real estate agent. And I'm like, I need you to help me find a new spot for me and Jax. And she sent me a list and I looked on a list and um, I saw these townhouses that I had already toured when I went to, when I was like looking to buy. So I already knew what they looked like and I already knew it was already familiar like with the layouts and uh, 
everything in the neighborhood and stuff. So I was like, this is the only one I want to go see. This is it. Like, I kind of already know this is the one I want to, this is where I want to be at. And so it's funny because the day before I was talking, the day before the appointment, I was, was texting the man and I was asking him about holy oil. And I was like, what is it? Like, I haven't seen it since I was a little girl and, you know, um, what is it? Like, I just never knew what it was. I was just asking him like, what is it? And he was just telling me that it's just oil that's been prayed over for like a long time. And, um, I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, same thing with like water. He was like, yeah. And so, yeah, like that's just, that's just what that was. And then I go to tour the house and I'm looking through it and I'm pretty, I'm so, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, this is it. Like I'm telling my cousin, like, this is fine. This is it. This is definitely our new place. And she's like, okay, well, do you believe in like blessing the house and stuff? And I was like, yeah, you know, like a little sage, you know what I mean? Like, of course. And she was like, all right, I'll be right back. So she goes to her car and she comes back with this little plastic baggie. And in the plastic baggie, is like a little container. Damn it. <laughs> I guess that reminds me to tell y'all what I'm using. So this is the um, MAC, I mean, mm, this is the LA Girl Pro Concealer and this is in the shade Chestnut. And I'm just putting that in the beginning, concealing my eyebrows in the beginning, like the front half of my eyebrows, I guess you can say. But she comes back with this little plastic baggie with this little container in it. And I'm just like, oh, okay. She hands it to me. She's like, I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna let you do your thing. And that was my first time ever like blessing a house, but it felt so natural, even though that was my first time blessing the house. I just kind of went through and I grabbed the oil and I just touched all like the like entry points, like everything that kind of felt like a like a portal, like, you know, so I touched all the door handles. I touched all the um, door frames and things like that. And um, I was like, all right, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And then that was it. It's ours, you know. And uh, it was just so strange. I was just literally talking about holy oil the day before. I never even talked about it, spoke about it, anything. And uh, um, the holy oil that she, seeing it actually like manifest and like in my hands. And like, I haven't never touched this before and I've never experienced, only time I experienced it when I go to church, you know what I'm saying, with my grandma when I was a little girl and I walk out with a shiny cross on my forehead. And that was the only time I ever experienced it. So it was just like, confirmation you know like stuff like that you can't really make up so it's just time for me and Jax to go um i don't really feel safe just being around all these people like this and uh it's just time for something a little bit more you know i need two-car garage <laughs> you know what i'm saying period but it's just i'm just so ready to be done i'm so ready to move like transitions are always so uncomfortable and uh, no matter how much I try to convince myself to just be comfortable with being uncomfortable, I still be uncomfortable. <laughs> I still be like, okay, God, I'm ready for this to be done. Thank you. I'm going to go through it. But like, okay, I don't like the way this feels. Like, <laughs> never get used to growth feeling so uncomfortable. Like, oh my gosh, like my baby going to kindergarten. There's just so much fear and unknown and I hate to say fear but it is it's scary it's like oh it's scary at first and then like it becomes normal but at first it's definitely like oh my god you know how is he gonna react and like how is he gonna you know this is just Jackson's like school is just so I don't know it's just so scary I'm not answering this because these telemarkers starting to get creative. Y'all starting to have the same area code and stuff as me. Like, don't, mm-mm, mm-mm. I just still cannot believe that I have a freaking five-year-old, y'all. It's so crazy. I don't even, sometimes I be like, dang, I got a kid. Like, when I be telling people I got a baby, it be sounding so crazy. Like, yeah, I got a five-year-old. Like, what? I got a five-year-old. But I'm sure Jackson will do just fine. Um, I do be, sometimes I am worried about like keeping my cover under wraps. I don't like for people to know who I am initially because I feel like they treat my baby differently because of just, you know, I could see if we live somewhere where this was like normal, but my job is still not normal here. Like when I was talking to the real estate guy, and uh, you know, he was talking about my, my employment and stuff. And I was like, 
do you know what an influencer is? And he's like, no. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, well, I got to explain it to you. Um, but just being an influencer out here is still not something that like, like it's not normal out here. So, um, or common. So yeah, like I just feel like when people meet Jax, like Jax is one of those kids where if you treat him like he's dumb, he going to play you like you dumb. And, uh, um, I don't know. I just don't be wanting people to get him no special treatment because he's not dumb. Like Jackson's literally so smart and I feel like he be playing people and people be allowing him to like play him. And I'm just like, don't get his boy no special attention or no special nothing. Like there's nothing wrong with Jackson. He has all the sense in the world. So don't let him manipulate you into thinking that he can't do something or, you know, I don't know. I just find that I feel like people treat my baby different when they find out who I am. Also, Jackson has this, like, regardless of me, Jackson has this, like, charm about him. And I guess it's just him being a cancer. But Jackson can be very, very manipulative, okay? Like I said, if he already just assumed that you think he dumb, he like, all right, cool. <laughs> okay, I ain't got to do nothing, you know? Like I dropped him off at speech therapy one time. Speech therapy was working, but it wasn't, like, working, working because I don't know if Jackson had already just read these people, but she came to the car one time and she was just like, he doesn't know his animal sounds. And I was like, he definitely knows his animal sounds. <laughs> and I'm sorry that he just didn't feel like, you know, doing his animal sounds today, but like Jackson definitely knows his animal sounds. And um, yeah, like she was just like, so we're working on that. And I'm just like, the, the boy know his animal sounds okay he can count to 100 he knows all his planets like he knows his freaking animal sounds all right jackson be playing people but then when people know who i am like i just feel like that makes people i don't know treat him differently and i don't want that like i don't want him to get any special treatment even though he don't need me for that to get special treatment because it's like he gets special treatment anywhere he go i guess just because it's so weird y'all i like Found out that my baby had the same light inside of him that I have inside of me. So seeing people like gravitate to him, you know, like seeing him just like light up a room. It's just so interesting to see that outside of myself, like very interesting. But Jackson has a light. So I know he doesn't need me for that, but like my social media presence just doesn't make it any better. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, we just got back from a little trip for Jackson's birthday. We went to New Orleans for his birthday, y'all. And I'm still on cloud nine about that birthday because we had so much fun. And uh, um, it was just healing for us to just go and just, I planned the whole thing. And like, you know, even though I was scared to death to go really, uh, it worked out and we had a lot of fun and I know my baby felt so special on his birthday and I, I just rocked it out, you know, by myself. And uh, not to say that I didn't think I could do it because I knew I could do it. I just wasn't having fun doing it because it just was scary. It was new, you know, but I would much rather me and him have an experience together. This is the makeup by Mario Foundation in 230. It is the wrong color for me though. I need like, it's, I feel like this is the wrong color. Like, it needs to be more red. Um, so, I need to go get another one of those. Because the Makeup by Mario Foundation, I, it's just been my go-to, like, for real. And then I'm going to use NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in uh, Caramel also. And we're just gonna, yeah. But... I just felt like a badass mama, y'all. Like the fact that I did everything um, and we just had a good time. And it was just like, you know, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to throw him a birthday party or if I wanted to, you know, go out of town. Going out of town was just a lot scarier, but I just knew Jackson would just enjoy himself a lot more on an airplane. I knew he would enjoy the monster truck show. And so I just was like, okay, let's just go out of town. And that's what we did. And it just worked out, you know, but really what really was so healing about that birthday trip was this was Jackson's first birthday where we were just completely alone. And, um, there was no like outside interference. So like his last verse, I'm gonna just blend this out with my beauty blender. I might've let it stay for too long. I had to check and make sure the audio was right. But, um, yeah, I was just more so like proud of myself because this was our first time, like first birthday of us just, it just being like us solo, right? 
and um there are a lot of emotions <laughs> that came along with this that I didn't know that I was gonna have because like you know I know my baby got posted on Father's Day um and I didn't understand why but <laughs> he didn't get posted you know so that left like feelings as to like what if he posts him on his birthday you know things like that like and for those of you who don't know allow me to catch you up because I'm kind of tired of like just talking about it, just kind of want to just put it out there and just let it just, you know what I'm saying? Just put it out there. Jackson's last birthday, July of last year, was the last time that Jackson seen his dad. Um, it was the last time I talked to him because that birthday was just, pfft, that was terrible. That was a terrible time. But yeah, um, so I haven't spoken to his dad since July of last year. And uh, he stopped calling his iPad in September of last year. So this was our first birthday where it was just like us you know and i can definitely say that just no contact has made me such a better parent like i don't second guess myself um i don't I, like i don't second guess myself like my mind is just not cloudy it's so clear and i know exactly what i want to do for my baby and i know my baby and you can't guess like me into thinking that i'm not good for my baby because i'm good for my baby and my baby good for me like we're good you know what i'm saying um but yeah this was our first time like this was my first birthday with him and it that felt like it was just ours and there was no resentment and even like even if someone's like not this wasn't our first birthday of his that we spent alone um but it was the first birthday that just felt like ours because there wasn't any resentment like there was no resentment there was no like oh it should have been this way it could have been this way it was supposed to be this way like it was just us and we was just vibing you know and so like no contact is the best thing um in this scenario just for me and for Jax. And uh, mind you, I just want to let y'all know <laughs> before y'all start going to go send this man hate mail and things like that. Um, he's not blocked from my phone. He's not blocked from Jax's iPad. He just simply disappeared, okay? <laughs> he just simply, <laughs> he just disappeared, y'all. Um, he just doesn't want to be, you know, I can't speak on him, but you know, I'm not in the business of making somebody do something that they don't want to do. I'm not in the business of forcing people to do things. Um, there is no deficit. We're not missing out on anything. He sent his money every month. He mind his business, I mind mine. And like, that's just the way that it goes. You know, everybody wants to know what happened to, you know who, <laughs> that's what happened. He just disappeared, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just disappeared. You know, it was a part of me that knew he was disappearing. I could talk about that, like, in a different video because that's just like a whole, you know, thing in itself. I'm gonna sit underneath my eyes with this Laura Mercier Translucent Honey uh, Ultra Blur. This is the Ultra Blur, okay? I sat underneath my eyebrows with just the regular one, but we're gonna try the Ultra Blur, okay? Um. But yeah, I knew he was going to disappear. <laughs> I knew he was going to disappear. I knew he went in it from the jump, you know? So, like, when I had Jax, I already knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? Because we both had two different opinions on uh, even having him. So, I just already kind of knew what it was. So, it's not a surprise to me, y'all. And I'm actually really happy and I'm really peaceful. And I just need y'all to leave him alone. Like... I just need y'all to leave him alone. Cause if somebody bullied this man back into my baby life, I'm 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 going to I'm going to beat somebody's ass. <laughs> so I just want everybody just to leave him alone. Leave him where he's at, okay? And if I felt like there was a fight to fight, y'all, I would have fought it. There is no fight to fight. <laughs> there isn't. But it is so interesting how you never get used to being a single mom or like being a mom in general, you never get used to it. But being a single mom and you trying to navigate your emotions and, you know, also like you're trying to adjust to this new reality. And it's like no matter how much you accept it, you still can't ever believe it. It's like, damn, I'm baby mama. It's like you just be minding your business and you're just like, damn, I'm baby mama. Pump gas, damn, I'm baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Like. Then it's, it, then it's situations that, like, bring it to your attention. You at school, and it's donuts with dads, and it's just like, damn, my baby ain't got no daddy. It's, it's the daddy-daughter dance, and the, and the dance with the daddies, and they got to make the family tree, and it's just like, damn, what am I going to tell my baby? You know, so it's just like, 
it's just a lot y'all like to just try to navigate and uh, get used to and so I talk about it a lot because it's my reality it's my life you know but I hate that when it comes to talking about me being a single mom you get the pity that comes along with it you know people feeling bad for you and oh my god that breaks my heart that's so heartbreaking and just all this other stuff and it's just like I don't need that <laughs> um I actually tweeted the other day like it's crazy how like single moms with deadbeats get pitied the most but really it's the single moms that got a co-parent with people that they don't get along with that be that be going through it and the single moms who are married okay <laughs> tea that be going through it so i'm like it's just crazy how like we just get pitied the most somebody was like not the struggle struggle olympics girl shut up shut up yeah Ugh, that's why i hate social media anyway the pity people feeling bad for you like oh i never get used to the like, people feeling bad for me i'm just like y'all there's nothing to feel bad about like i'm okay we're okay and i know the situation isn't as fortunate as one would make it seem but this is the best case scenario um, what am I saying? So, yeah, like, I know this may seem like a bad situation, but y'all, this is just, this is, the, this is just us in the most favorable outcome. Like, don't be sad for me. Be happy for me. Like, don't I look happy? <laughs> don't be sad. Like, yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's a struggle. Like, sometimes it is difficult, but that's just with anything in life. You know what I mean? But I just hate how like sometimes I just want to talk about it and when I start to talk about it I can't find my brush oh it's in my purse okay I got my I had to go get my foundation okay so for my foundation I'm using max studio fix and nw35 this might actually warm me up so and like match this color a little bit but um yeah like sometimes i just want to talk about it like sometimes i just want to vent and because this is my real life and this is my truth i just feel like people look at the situation as so miserable they think that i'm like talking out of misery or or bitterness sometimes i just want to vent about the shit you know what i'm saying and like then someone comes in and they're like, oh my God, catch me up, what happened? And then you get the, oh my God, I can't believe he would do that. Broken heart, broken heart. This is so sad. Oh my gosh, I'm about to send him hate mail. And da, 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 da. And it's just like, it's not about the third party. Like, it's never about the third party. Like, like that is the most non-factor factor that I've ever seen non-factor, okay? Don't, it's not about him. Always gonna be about me and Jax because this is our life, you know? And that's not me saying like, oh, we good. You know, my baby don't need no daddy because he definitely needs a daddy. But he need a good daddy. He need a heal daddy. Like he need a uh, intentional daddy. He needs a, you know, considerate daddy, a able daddy, a thoughtful daddy. Like he needs a daddy that wants to be a daddy. So like, don't be forcing somebody. You know what I'm saying? I just be wanting to vent about it, but it's so hard to vent on social media about real life things. It's really crazy. The other day, I wanted to post something on TikTok and I had to stop myself. And I was like, is this too real for social media? And I think that's just so crazy that there is a such thing as stuff being too real for social media. And uh, I think that's why like a lot of people are disconnected from social media because it's just a lot of energies on social media. So it's almost like not worth it. Like you can find inspiration. It just kind of depends on like your mental, you know, like where you are mentally. Um, but the same place you can find inspiration is the same place you can find like inadequacy there's just so many different energies and people just projecting and deflecting and it's just a lot social media is a lot but it's like nothing at the same time because it's not real like a lot of it is just not real but i get that because it's not a safe space to be real because there are so many people up there that may be miserable they like to use other people's lives to um justify their own misery and things like that so like it's really not a space where like you can be real at, which I feel like creates this illusion on like how real life actually is. And then that's where you get people feeling lonely because the way things look on social media are not the way things um, actually are in like real life, you know, because people don't talk about, you know, the stuff that happens in, on the shadow side. People don't talk about the dark things, but trust me, wherever there is light, there is shadow because light cast shadows so even when stuff looks you know 
good or desirable there are just everything comes with something so like for instance like when i got pregnant right and this goes with like any i guess life event right you know everybody's like oh my god congratulations and you're like okay i did something good <laughs> you know and there's just not enough people talking about like the realistic side of being a mother um on social media i mean if you go find if you go looking for it you might can find it but a lot of times it's because it's just not safe and nobody wants to be the sacrificial lamb. It's just not there. So um, I feel like that just creates this illusion. Everybody wants to be positive. And it's like, of course, you don't want to be the person to, you know, I guess rain on somebody's parade or just be like, oh, well, congratulations. But you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, like, I just wish that that information was just out there for people in case they needed to go in case they wanted to know what the shadow side of things look like, you know, in case when issues do come up and, you know, feelings do come up because with all of these like life changes, you grow. So with everything, there's growth. And so like people sometimes have a hard time navigating that by themselves. And so, you know, they look for guidance and, um, when you go to look for guidance in a space where it seems like everybody just has it together and you know, nobody needs guidance. It's like, dang, <laughs> I must just be alone, you know? And it's, you're really not. It's just the way that things look, you know what I'm saying? But that's why I always try to make sure that I come up here and I just give y'all the real deal about everything. And I don't let social media 101% into my life, but I will be transparent about things that I feel like um, can help someone or things that I feel like I've overcome. And, um, I don't mind being that sacrificial lamb sometimes. <laughs> um, it do suck sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. It does suck because, you know, even though you can be this positive person and you can just radiate this positive energy and you can be a light, like I said, where there's light, there is shadow. So of course you're gonna have people lurking in the back ready to like, you know what I'm saying? Use this opportunity to make themselves feel better about their own situation and just stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> are those people <laughs> like literally um but yeah it's just interesting like the illusion that social media can create like you know congratulations on graduating college and it's like you know not enough people talk about like how hard it might be to find a job or congratulations on quitting your job and starting you know entrepreneurship and you know people don't really talk about those slow months you know or those months where you just got to really depend on faith like people just don't talk about stuff like that because it's just not safe to talk about it on social media it's <laughs> not safe and like even if you don't attract it it will find you. It can be really beneficial and it can be really healing when it ends up on the right side of the internet. But in the event that your vulnerable moment end up on the wrong side of the internet, that can be like extremely challenging. Um, like that mom who went viral for, um, she was venting about her special needs son. I don't know if y'all saw it, but it's got like a couple good million views on Twitter. Um, this is the Fenty Beauty Mocha Mommy that I'm just warming up my face a little bit here with and it went viral on twitter and they were talking about how um it was a girl that retweeted in she was like complaining about something that you made is crazy or sound like you're complaining about some something that you're made that you made and moms of special need children or people that work with special needs children or no special needs children if you know you know you know what I'm saying? Like, you're only safe in that community. Like, single moms are only safe in the community of single moms. Like, black women are only safe in the community of, like, black women. Like, kind of, sort of, not really. Um, But, like, special needs parents, we find comfort in, like, you know, because, you know, you understand. You know what I mean? From the outside looking in, it always look easier, always look like, you know, X, Y, and Z. Just like people with no kids think they know how to parent people with kids. Like, I, they feel like they can, you know, tell people with kids how to move and things like that. But it just, things are just not always what they, they seem, you know? And um, I felt really bad for that lady because I understood, like, if you are a neurodivergent or you work with those kids, you just know, like, she wasn't complaining about them. But people almost act like, you know, if you are a wife and you work from home, and you don't have a job, like, you know, you're a homemaker, you're not allowed to be tired. Or like, if you are a parent, you're not allowed to get frustrated and like, People just act like you're not allowed to be that. And so like, 
it's just weird um it's just weird and it's just not that's why i kept my baby off of social media a good amount um after you know i i, st I stopped showing jacks on social media so much um because i'm still trying to understand him myself and like i just don't need anybody outside trying to speculate like what's 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 up with him i'm trying to figure my baby out myself i just met this human five years ago okay <laughs> for real and i'm still trying to figure him out myself so i kind of stopped showing jacks on social media um i actually don't feel like there's a reason to put your kids on social media at all uh but i do it sometimes just because it'll be more work trying to make sure he stays out of it but um yeah like especially like with his speech delay and stuff like that that came with a lot of judgment you know and i just see how people talk about kids with speech delays or you know things like that like why y'all kids not talking yet and it's like girl don't you think if i knew why he wasn't talking he would be talking i don't know why he don't want to talk he don't want to talk like what and i don't have time to deal with that man i'm already trying to like deal with this stuff in my head like you dealing with the feelings of just is something wrong with my baby or you know why he won't talk you trying to figure it out you stressing yourself out because you can't communicate with him on a day-to-day -day basis and like you know you you got all these feelings of you try not to compare but you can't help but to compare like it's just a lot that you got to deal with and the last thing that you need is for somebody to fix their raggedy mouth and say why he not talking yet you know that baby ain't talking yet he don't talk like people just just like ugh, you know don't need that don't need that energy like at all it's just a lot your baby not talking is not a direct reflection of what kind of parent you are some kids just don't want to talk people are different and like that's okay you know and because i am different i accept that my baby's different you know like i know he's different i don't want him to be like nobody else <laughs> i want him to be like jacks and that's it and i want him to be okay with just being like jacks and that's okay and I'm gonna teach him to be okay with Jackson. And that's okay. And like, I had to figure that out myself, like through myself first, because you know, when your baby's not talking, you're like, oh my God, is he ever gonna talk? Like there's some times where you think like, what if this is it? Like, what if he's just not going to talk anymore? Like, what if this is just as far as he's willing to comprehend? And um, you get nervous. Like, like did we reach a plateau? But, like, you got to understand that, like, he's just processing things at his own time. And, um, like, projecting that worry and that judgment from other people onto him is just going to disrupt his process even more. So just let him do his thing. You know what I'm saying? Let him do his thing. Don't worry about it. Everything happens like when it's supposed to happen because when I think about like the time that I was in when Jackson wasn't talking and like he was just in his own world because now Jackson feels a lot more present and uh, um, previously it felt like he was just very disconnected um, and uh, almost like nobody was home you know he just wouldn't come out of his own world but looking back on it i think Jax was in his own world for his own good because mommy's world was jacked up <laughs> like i ain't gonna lie i had so many emotions i had so much healing to do i had so much there was just so much going on that I had to figure out first and I just can't imagine if my baby could actually comprehend what was going on you know like if I actually had to explain to him like you know if he actually had to say like you know where's my daddy I haven't seen my daddy you know or like him saying like I want to call daddy and things like that like I don't know how I would have navigated that space you know what I'm saying or I just don't know like it was it's so good that he was in his own world because just I don't want him to have to heal from me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to create an environment that my son has to heal from. And so I'm just happy that he waited until I got myself together to like mix worlds. You know, now I live in my world. He lives in wor his world. And like sometimes we come together and then like we go back in our own separate worlds and stuff like that. But like he's just so much more present now. Like every morning I wake up to it's time to get up. It's time to get up. <laughs> and I just be like, <gasps> Okay, Jax. <laughs> it's, it's, it's raining outside. It is raining outside. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really appreciate, you know, everybody telling me how much of a good mom and stuff I am. And I don't really like be thinking about it like that. You know what I'm saying? I never really like look at it like that because this is just like the person that I am. You know, the mama that I am is the person that I am. And as long as, you know, Jax is good, I'm good. Like, everybody know I love me some, like, I love that boy down. I love him so bad. Because he just like me, you know? And we and we different. And I just, I love that about him. I embrace all of his quirks and just 
little things about him. I just embrace all of that. I'm using the Fenty um, Kilowatt. This is the girl next door in the Chic Freak. Just gonna just highlight, do a little bit of highlight in these places. I appreciate how much everybody tells me like how much of a good mom I am. But to be honest with you, I just feel like I'm so much comfortable being a mom in a space where like it's just me and I only keep people around me that like understand me and like understand what type of mom I am and they understand um just me and like it's like that with everywhere. Like I just feel comfortable in spaces where people understand me. I like being around people who know my intentions, who know my heart. I like being around people who don't take things personally. People who just have like a greater understanding of of the universe and God. And I feel like if we all understand that we're here and we have a purpose, um, sometimes like human emotions just kind of like get in the way of that. So like sometimes I'm noticing that like the more spiritual I become, and I thought this was my autism, which I'm considering actually going to get diagnosed with for real, for real. But I'm noticing that like I thought it was my autism, like the disconnect that I had with people, but I really do feel like it's just, I have a, just a deeper understanding of the universe and the, because I have this deeper understanding, I feel so disconnected from everybody. Like literally, like I just be like, why don't you get this? Like, how don't you get this? It's like one of those things where once you got those goggles on, they're on and you can't take them off. And the way you see things is just, different um you can't unsee them and it's like so i can't help that i have this like bird's eye view perspective of the world and of my life because i just know that i'm here for a greater purpose you know and so getting my little human emotions wrapped up in it it's just it's just a waste of time to me like i don't know like i just be okay with everything you know what i'm saying like okay like all right. And it can come off as like very detached and very cold, but I'm just like, I can't connect with people who aren't like committed to growth. Like people that don't want to grow, I have to just leave them where they at. Like it's no bad blood or anything. It's just like, we're never going to see eye to eye because that amount of like self-reflection can be like really hard for people. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. It can be, it, it, I just can't deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with it looking like, oh, j -Lo always going through friends. She can't keep no friends. You know what I mean? I'm okay with always being in a house or or, you know, just knowing what I need to do, like for my own energy, like I'm just okay with that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel too deep. Sometimes I feel too detached and I can understand, you know, like where people are coming from, but I just don't have the capacity for it. I don't like I can respect everybody being in their own journeys and taking their time. However, just certain things like are more draining than others and being around people that don't want to grow um or like want to hold on to that like victim mentality or feel entitled to things or um just get really wrapped up in like real petty stuff like I just don't I don't I don't have time for that I just can't I can't connect to it I very detached from it um it's a noticeable detachment um i cannot engage in a conversation that is just not productive you know what i mean like when it comes to that it's almost like i'm a debbie downer like ever since like my frontal lobe fully developed i'm like a debbie downer i'm just like friend that's not safe <laughs> friend don't do that friend what friend like i'm just you know i try to just keep my comments to myself and just keep i have just a different <sighs> understanding of things now you know and it's hard not to like hold everybody else around you accountable accountable to that and, like and that requires a good amount of detachment also because energy is transferable so in order for me to not you know allow that energy to like bleed onto me um you gotta have a good amount of uh detachment my lashes still look good and i got them done a month ago period let's do a little bit of setting spray Like, I guess the theme of my life lately has just been like rejection is protection. And, you know, I don't know what God is protecting me from. And you never know what God is protecting you from. But like, you can only pray that you never find out. Um, This is Max Chestnut, of course. I feel like I had this pencil for like eight years. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, But yeah, it's just best to just not force everything and just to let everything be surrender everything relinquish control like sometimes you won't even know what season of your life you are in because like sometimes you might feel isolated or 
uh, lonely, but like you gotta remember that elevation requires separation. And so you're elevating, you know? This loneliness, you're growing like at an exponential rate, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just important for us to not take stuff personal, you know? And just understand that like I said, everything is happening for us and not to us and that we're just not you know victims or anything and like sometimes you feel like like you could be feeling like you're losing everybody but like god is just making space for like people that like you really need and people that really you know understand you and things like that you know i think back to a time where i thought i was losing my mind but i was just gaining peace of mind i was finding peace of mind I really thought i was losing it like for real <laughs> I lost my mind and, and, and found my peace of mind. You know, it's crazy when I think about it like that. So rejection shouldn't feel like rejection. Like rejection should feel like redirection um, because sometimes we got to look somewhere else. Sometimes what we think is the answer is not the obvious answer. And a lot of the times we be looking externally and we just need to look internally. So sometimes we get rejected so we can stop seeking external validation, you know, from that man or, you know, waiting on somebody to tell us sorry and having all this power over us and things like that like and sometimes we just get rejected to be reminded like to get out of that victim like so you can learn to get out of that victim mindset like you're not the victim you know i'm telling you y'all like once you understand that everything just feels so much more peaceful like everything just you just let everything be you know what i'm saying and also you really gotta trust that like things are just always working out for you that's what i do I just know that things are always working out for me. So anytime something seems like a mishap or, you know, like anytime something feels unfortunate, I know that there is a uh, meaning behind this. I know that there's a meaning behind it. This is the Dior lip oil. I actually put too much um, lip liner on. Hold on. Let me clean that up. And by clean it up, I guess I just mean wipe all of it off. And this is in Rosewood. But yeah, I know everything works out for me. So I just don't worry about nothing. I am cool as a cucumber over here, y'all. Now, if I can stop overthinking, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Once I stop overthinking, it's over. It's over, everybody. But yeah, that's still a work in progress. We all are still a work in progress. Everything is a work in progress. Everything. So just trust the process, y'all. Don't take things personally. Don't cry over spilled milk. Life goes on, literally. It's gonna go on with you or without you. So just get yourself together. Pull yourself together. You know what I'm saying? Time don't stop for nobody. It just goes on with or without you. So it's best to just go with the flow. Let it be. It is what it is. It is what it ain't. I'm telling y'all. I'm just, that's how I stay peaceful, y'all. <laughs> like, for real. For real. that's just how i stay sane in all of this situation i don't worry i don't worry i don't i think but i don't worry where that pencil go that fast if it was a snake it would have bit me i hate a shiny i hate a shiny eyebrow okay all right so that concludes my makeup look y'all and i guess that concludes this video also let me just do one more spray down and this is just like my everyday makeup that this is just what I do all the time. For my blush, I forgot to tell y'all, I use Juvia's. Um, this is the Warrior 2 palette and I just use these two like pink colors for my um for my blush. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, but yeah, I hope we had a great talk. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all enjoyed listening. I hope y'all took something from this video. I hope that you might have found some answers or some guidance in this video. Um, I really appreciate you for sitting through the whole thing. I love you so much. I'll see you on my next one. Bye.